Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. Lots of people think that we can just adapt to climate change. How does one adapt to rapidly rising sea levels on coastlines around the planet? Significant rises of sea level. I mean, you, you can only build so many walls and so high and you know, how high do you build them? I mean, do you build them for 10 years, 20 years? You know, the sea's gonna come over them. How do you adapt to stuff like that? How do you adapt to the, the high temperatures and humidity? Many people have this misconception that people will adapt, will adjust. People will get acclimatized to certain regions and that only works, uh, goes so far. There's physical limits based on the, the laws of thermodynamics on how heat moves from hot areas to cold areas. There's different, you know, there, there, there's limits on how much heat can be removed from the human body um, given external temperatures and humidities. And once those limits are exceeded, the body just overheats. You can't be outside unprotected. I mean, how do we adapt to that? You know, you'd have to be inside all the time on, with air conditioning. You'd have to live in caves. You'd have to wear, uh, cooled suits, you know, some sort of uh, space type suit, you know, that cools your body so that you can be outside even, even uh, for, for mild exertion. Uh, not, not a very pleasant thought, but that's, I'm just telling you the way things are as I see it. So this is a 2010 paper. This is the best paper I could find on the human, the adaptability limit to climate change due to heat stress for humans. Okay, so here it's often assumed that humans will be able to adapt to any possible warming. But heat stress puts a robust upper limit to such adaptation. Peak heat stress quantified by the wet bulb temperature T sub W is similar across diverse climates, right? It never really exceeds 31 Celsius. This was written in 2010. Now we've seen, we've approached 35 Celsius for the wet bulb temperature um, in a number of places, most notably Middle East near the Persian Gulf in the middle of the summer, middle of a heat wave, because you get all that evaporation, air temperatures above 35 degrees, and unlike normal desert conditions, you're near, near a big body of water that, that's producing uh, a source of, of moisture. Any exceedance of 35 for extended periods would induce hyperthermia in humans and other mammals. It's impossible to dissipate metabolic heat. Okay, so it generally, it happens very rarely now. I wouldn't say never. This, is, this was now in 2018 versus 2010. It does happen, but it's very rare. With global mean warming of about seven, they're, the habitability of some regions would come into question. Now, take this with a grain of salt. I would argue that the numbers are even small. You know, you wouldn't have to have a rise like this. We're already approaching it with, uh, you know, we haven't reached two degrees above pre-industrial. We're already getting some regions with it. But it does argue with 11 to 12, the majority of the human population is currently distributed would be uh, basically... Would, would exceed this wet bulb temperature. This is a very serious and significant thing. People that think, oh, we can just adapt to this sort of thing. You know, we'll all have to be living underground or indoors in order to survive this, this type of thing. And, and these numbers are possible from fossil fuel burning. So basically, okay, so I won't, talk, I won't dwell on all the details here. I'm just gonna talk about the key important things. First of all, heat stress is already a leading cause of fatalities, okay? Um, often warm nights. You know, if the human body is stressed during the day, if it can recover at night, um, then, then great. But if the nights are warm, that's a thing that is a real kicker, you know? And young people, older people, people with medical conditions, you know, people that aren't in the best physical health are much, much higher at risk. Um, you know, hot days can alter the lifestyles. For example, you can work at night and, and not work during the day, for example, in very hot regions. Okay, so, you know, this idea that we can adapt is not valid. It turns out to be untrue. Okay, 
So basically, let's talk a little bit about the human body. A resting human body, adult, generates 100 watt of metabolic heat. Okay, that's an additional to solar heating. That, that heat must be carried away from the body by conduction, cool, uh, evaporative cooling, which is sweat evaporating, cooling the body, and also net infrared radiative cooling, long wave radiation cooling. Okay, now conductive and evaporative cooling can only happen if the object is warmer than the environmental wet bulb temperature, okay, which you measure by using the standard thermometer with a wetted cloth, fully ventilating it, getting, getting, so you get all, all the evaporation that you can from that moisture, and it depresses the temperature, and that's the wet bulb temperature. An object the second law of third thermodynamics does not allow an object to lose heat to an environment whose wet bulb exceeds the object's temperature. Okay, so if the wet bulb temperature of the environment exceeds the temperature of your skin, right, which is a couple of degrees colder than, the temperature, than your core body temperature, then it doesn't matter, there's no way you're getting rid of that heat. Okay, you're not, you're not losing that heat. Heat goes from hotter areas to colder areas. If the hotter area is the environment, the colder area is your body, your body temperature, that heat is, you, that heat is going into your body. It's not, you, you can't dissipate that 100 watt. You go into heat exhaustion, heat stroke, and death in six hours in the shade at 35 Celsius and 100% humidity. Okay, um... Okay, so, you know, there, there, there's, uh, you know, the body does adapt somewhat, okay? So there, there's some, depending on your clothing, activity, acclimatization, okay? Um, I think the blood thickens if it's cold there, thin slightly if it's warmer. There's some acclimatization, but there's limits, as I say. You can't violate the second law of thermodynamics. Um, so our humans, our core body temperature is near 37 Celsius, which is 98.6. It varies slightly among individuals, male, female, body weight, body type, um, you know, metabolic rate, age, all kinds of different things. Uh, it varies even a bit during the day, from morning to uh, evening, okay? It does not adapt to local climate, okay? We're warm-blooded. Human skin temperature is strongly regulated at 35 Celsius or below under normal conditions. The skin has to be colder than the body core for heat to be conducted to the skin from the body and to dissipate heat. Okay, if the skin temperature is above 35, then the core body temperature will be higher than well, it'll reach lethal values. 42 to 43 Celsius, your core body temperature, for skin temperatures of 37 to 38 versus uh, the 35, okay? So two or three degree increase of rise in skin temperature and your core body temperature is, is higher and you basically, it doesn't matter how fit and acclimatized you are, you're on your way to dying. So it's intolerable for the wet bulb to be greater than 35. Now, that 35... Okay, so let me show you basically, this is some data showing, okay, so this is, uh, from, this is from 1999 to 2008, this guy here and this guy here. This is just considering land temperature, this is considering an ocean model, and this is what happens with a global mean temperature, 10 or 12, deg 12 degrees Celsius warmer, 10 degrees Celsius global mean warming. Okay, relative to the last decade. So what you can see is this is the wet bulb temperature. First of all, the black is the temperature. The blue is the maximum temperature. And the red is the wet bulb temperature. Now what you can see is, and this is a histogram going around the planet, all the different areas. And what you can see is the wet bulb temperature very rarely exceeds 30, 31. In, in today's present climate systems. You know, 
just land, land ocean. But this is what happens under climate change. This whole curve shifts, right? And this is a 35 degrees and large parts of the earth are above, exceed those conditions and people can't be outside. Um, and this is showing you the wet bulb temperatures here. So um, the, the yellow from 30 to 35 is the orange to yellows. Doesn't appear much here, you know, not at all really. And then here, look at all these regions here. This is above 30, this is 35 to 40 wet bulb temperature. People couldn't live outside in these regions here, in these vast regions. 30 to 35 is approaching those limits and the oranges to yellows. Okay, and then down here is in the safer zones. So look at this. I mean, people are gonna have to basically live at the poles to be outside for any length of time. Other people around the entire planet, you know, how, how's the planet, how are we gonna deal with this? I mean, we can't basically, we can't let these conditions happen. Yeah, this is exactly where we're heading with our present policies and it's, it's, it's madness. It's absolutely madness. Okay, um, so what I wanna show you, I, I wanna talk a little bit about the discussion in this paper. Just Google this paper, okay, uh, and have a good look at this. An adaptability limit to climate change due to heat stress, Sherwood and Huber. Okay, so discussion. Could humans survive wet bulb temperatures greater than 35? Okay, for a few hours, right, and your body temperature's rising, and then you have to have ample time to recover. But unfortunately, the wet bulb temperature being extreme are long-lived events. So nighttime doesn't drop too much relative to daytime. Daily maxima from one day to the next are usually within a degree Celsius. Okay, so these things can last a while. And, uh, you know, if you don't have... Um, the, the wet bulb at least one to two degrees Celsius below the skin temperature of 35, then, uh, you know, in the, the, then you're not going to be able to dissipate the heat. Okay, um, so they estimate the survivability limit is close to 35 for humans. It says, though, this could be a degree or two off. Now, I couldn't find recent, more recent work on this, so please have a look yourself and alert me if you can. So it may not be, so 33 might be the limit or 34 might be the limit as opposed to 35. Now, what about other mammals? Okay, other mammals, it depends on their core body temperatures. So mammals have survived past warm climates. Does this contradict the conclusions? Okay, so let's look at the paleogene. Global mean temperature was about 10 C warmer. Tropical temperature, five to six degrees C warmer than normal. So the wet bulb would be 36, up to 36, most commonly being 32 to 33, instead of being, you know, 29, with 29 or 30, which is what it is now at maximum. There'd still be, now mammals have higher body core temperatures in general than humans. We're among the lowest for mammals. So, uh, you know, if their body core temperature was 39, for example, there'd still be a margin of error and they would still be able to survive in these conditions. But during the Paleocene, Eocene thermal maximum, or, you know, there'd be intolerable conditions over much broader areas. Um, okay, so, you know, on evolutionary time scales, you know, there, there'll be, you might expect that, uh, you know, the, uh, like basically when it's super hot, okay, the major mammals are, are over a kilogram in weight, are about a factor of 10 less massive during the early Eocene, for example. So during very, very warm periods, mammals over a kilogram are about 10 times lighter than they would be during cooler periods. This is called Cope's Law. There's also something called transient dwarfing. So mid-latitude mammals during the Paleocene, Eocene thermal maximum were smaller. There's a very good reason for this, and that's because, because the, if you take the, the uh, it, it's a geometry problem, okay? Um, I'm going to have to go to a third video. This is a very important topic. Thanks for listening.